Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is highly anticipated. It's going to be all about my research projects in grad school. So I actually have the pleasure of taking on two different research projects. One of them is theoretical and the other one is more observational. However, in this video, I'm going to be talking about my theory project, which is my primary project that I'm working on at the moment. And it focuses on galactic winds as well as the multi-phase structure of the circumgalactic medium. If none of that makes any sense, hopefully by the end of this video, you will have a better understanding of what it is I do and what the circumgalactic medium is. And hopefully it will make you very excited Excited and also tempt you into studying the circumgalactic medium when you start grad school. But without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So to begin, I'm going to start off with a little bit of an analogy because hopefully it'll put some things into perspective a little bit. So I'm going to ask everyone to take a deep breath in and let it out. In that single breath full of air, you've just filled your lungs with about, say, a liter of air, okay? And in that liter of air, there are more molecules and more atoms in that single liter than there are liters of air in the entire world. So what does that mean? Well, within that one deep breath, at least one of those atoms in that breath full of air is in common with a few atoms that you took in your very first breath full of air whenever you were born. So what am I trying to get at? Atoms are constantly interacting with each other within this like atmosphere that we have here on Earth. They're bouncing around everywhere. They're traveling at high speeds. Gas particles are constantly being recycled in and out of your body to help regulate small scale processes that happen at the internal level. For for example, your body is trying to maintain homeostasis, so your body automatically inhales and exhales, breathing in more particles and exhaling more particles to keep blood flowing, for example, and your heart going. This might be a process that, you know, we experience here on Earth within our own bodies. However, a very similar process happens at the much larger scale. I'm talking galactic size level scale. This actually happens within galaxies. And this atmosphere region that I am teeing up here is the circumgalactic medium or the CGM, which I will use from now on in the rest of this video. So the CGM is this very thin atmosphere region that we see around a galaxy halo. The CGM extends hundreds of kiloparsecs beyond the galactic disk. Now the galactic disk is the more dense inner region of a galaxy where you'll find all of your stars as well as all of your cold gas, which then goes to fuel stars. Now within the disk, you get gas that is expelled out of the disk and into the CGM due to stellar winds, also AGN or supermassive black hole activity, also supernovae, they will expel gas, winds, and metals into the CGM. So then you've got gas that's heated from these feedback processes, expelled upwards or downwards, outwards, into the CGM, and that heats up the CGM. So most of the gas that you'll find within the CGM is going to be hotter than the disk. We've also got a mixture of cold gas in the CGM as well because nearby or like interacting galaxies will then accrete cold gas into the CGM and then into the disk. Some of the gas that is expelled from supermassive black hole activity or supernova activity might not reach super far distances out into the CGM and later will cool only to fall back into the disk and then maybe fuel star formation later again. So you have this kind of like recycling, reaccretion process that happens within the CGM and that regulates processes within the galactic disk. So ultimately the CGM is a very dynamic as well as very complex region that serves as a vital interface between galaxies and their larger cosmic environment. So similar to what I was saying earlier about the atmosphere regulating processes at both the small and the large scale, it's exactly the same for the CGM. And this constant cycling process that we see, particularly gas distribution as well as metal distribution, directly impacts the growth of star formation rates and chemical enrichment of the entire galaxy across cosmic time. According to the National Academy's 2020 Decadal Survey in Astronomy and Astrophysics, they said, Understanding how gas is accreted, consumed, removed, and recycled over a galaxy's lifetime is one of the most important areas of research at this time. So despite the CGM's significant importance, it's still very poorly understood just because it's 
proves itself to be very difficult to observe. As I mentioned before, this region is super thin and very diffuse. So the main way that observers measure the CGM is by measuring gas as well as metal content. However, in terms of the transportation of this gas in and out of the CGM, is very hard to do observationally and despite many efforts there still hasn't been anything truly conclusive which is why simulations are a great tool to be able to make up some of that groundwork that isn't as understood. The best part about being a simulator is that you can really bridge the gap between theory and observation with the help of simulations. So that is what my project essentially focuses on. The primary focus of my research project is to better understand how galactic winds driven by AGN, supermassive black holes, supernovae, as well as stellar feedback drive metals and gas into the CGM and also how it interacts within the CGM. So a metal in astronomy, weirdly enough, is actually anything that isn't helium and hydrogen. I know that's kind of weird, but that's just how things work around here. Metals in the CGM help us trace the complex flows of gas into and out of galaxies, helping us understand how feedback from supernovae, stellar winds, and AGN shape galaxy evolution. They also offer insight into the balance of inflows of pristine gas as well as outflows of enriched material which help us to better understand key processes that regulate star formation. The thermal state of the CGM is actually going to play a pivotal role because it's going to be very key into giving us insight of the recycling process of gas that we see being distributed from the disk into the CGM back into the disk. The CGM is what we consider to be very multi-phase. You're going to find different pockets of gas and metals at different temperatures. So the temperature of the CGM ranges to be what we consider to be very cool temperatures. I'm talking 10,000 degrees Kelvin up to extremely hot temperatures of 10 million degrees Kelvin. Now the temperature will play a critical role in determining how long things stay hot because gas that is very hot is going to retain in the CGM a lot longer than gas that is cold. Cool gas has a higher possibility of falling back into the galactic disk only to then potentially be recycled again or contribute to star formation. Both AGN feedback from the supermassive black hole, which rapidly grows through accretion, as well as stellar feedback from supernovae also plays a key part in the thermal state of the CGM. Both processes will heat up gas Gas, as well as distribute the gas in various distances from the galactic center. So if we can better understand how our metals and gas are flowing in and out of our CGM, we can better refine our models to replicate what we see in observations. So how do I carry out any of this research to begin with? Well, my work leverages using cosmological zoom-in simulations of a Milky Way sized galaxy. My simulations are run using this smooth particle hydrodynamical code called Changa. Uh, essentially, it's all of these particles in a box that mimic the flow of how a galaxy evolves, how it grows, how it shrinks. There are other galaxies that interact with my main galaxy. So this simulation accounts for the large-scale structure of the universe, all while maintaining the high resolution necessary to explore the mechanics of galaxy evolution. The Changa simulations have been rigorously tested. They re reproduce empirical results, such as the M-sigma result, as well as the stellar mass halo mass relations. If that didn't really make any sense to you, then it's totally okay. Just know that these are state-of-the-art cosmological simulations. These simulations have such a great resolution that they reproduce small-scale events such as supernovae explosions as well as stellar winds. So when you have a star that goes supernova within the simulation, there is energy that is directly injected into the nearby gas, which will push or expel everything opposite of the supernovae direction. And that is essentially what produces some of the winds that transports the gas up and outwards into the CGM. So step one of my project is going to be investigating gas retention within the CGM as well as hot gas recycling. To determine how feedback influences the distribution of metals as well as gas in the CGM, I'm going to start by tracking around 10 million particles within the disk across a three giga year time scale. For those of you who don't know, a giga year is just like a billion years. I don't know why astronomers 
don't just say a billion years, but anyway, a giga year is a billion years. So essentially across a three billion year time scale. So my analysis is going to be mapping metal distribution as well as tracing particle trajectories and their origins. I will also identify different cooling mechanisms. Is the gas cooling as it interacts with surrounding medium that's already within the CGM? Does the gas just maintain to be super hot as it continues to travel. I will also measure how long gas stays within the CGM, how it cools, and then effectively how it is recycled and how long that recycling time scale takes. For the sake of not wanting to give away too much about my research projects, particularly my results, um, before I have published anything, I will keep things to a minimal um, and just share some preliminary results with you all. I've been successful in tracking some wind particles from the disk into the CGM. Here I have included a GIF of some of that particle tracking that I have been doing. So essentially my simulation is broken up into a series of snapshots. So if you were to let your simulation play and you just press pause and you're looking at like one point in time, that is a snapshot. This GIF takes place over the series of 10 snapshots. And my first snapshot, I have my disc particles affected by feedback all in a 15 kiloparsec cylinder. And then in snapshot two, all of the particles then leave the disc and into the CGM and then I just track them forward in time where they end up. And here in this GIF you can see that quite a few of them actually get carried out by winds and extend further into the CGM. And the distances that they reach here in this histogram that I'm showing you here, you've got particles that extend all the way outwards into close to 100 kiloparsecs. Now this is great, however, given with what we see in observations, we start to see gas and metals extend across distances of 300 kiloparsecs or so. So we are noticing that it seems our feedback model in our simulation is not as strong as we anticipated it to be. So we have a little bit of work to do. We are going to run a new simulation using a completely different subgrid model, which will hopefully give us a bit more rigorous feedback processes. So that way we can see more gas and metals within the outermost distances of the CGM. Another one of my results that I will briefly go over is that we do end up seeing quite a bit of hot gas in the outermost part of the CGM. So here I have a figure showing the distance versus temperature of some of the gas particles in the final snapshot. So the y-axis is in log scale and you'll notice we do see gas particles at temperatures of about a million degrees Kelvin. These are colored by their velocity magnitude. The red particles are going to be particles traveling at faster speeds than the blue. So it's assumed that particles in red are going to continue traveling further up into the CGM and particles in blue are starting to slow down Maybe they've reached a very dense region of other particles in the CGM that has ultimately caused them to lose velocity. Um, I will look into this more in future studies, specifically when we run our next simulation with a new subgrid model. So that is all of the results that I will show for now. If you want to see future results, you will just have to wait until I have completed this project and have published all of my work, which um, if you've been watching from the beginning, you know that it's going to be a party because like I've mentioned a billion times before, your girl's not a very good writer. So the moment that I'm officially like a published scientist, I'm really gonna go big y'all. Like it's gonna be a day, okay? But if you wanna see all the good stuff that I've been cooking up lately, you'll have to wait until my paper is published and then I'll make a whole video on it. But moving forward, we do want to implement a new subgrid model into our simulations, which hopefully will change some of our results a bit. We will start to see gas reach further distances. Another thing that I'm looking into right now is some of that recycling cycling process, how much of our gas affected by wind then fuels star formation. As I've been tracking things, I notice that quite a few of the particles that I'm tracking do fall back into the disk and remain in the disk. I've even noticed that some of the gas particles turn to star particles. So we are seeing some of that recycled gas fueling star formation. So next I'll be checking some numbers. So just checking what fraction of those wind particles have then now fueled to be star particles. So ultimately, your girl has a lot of work to do. But it's been great. I love what I do and I love this project. Working with simulations is great. It can feel very satisfying. Like you have literally everything that you need to know right at your 
right at your fingertips in this little imaginary simulated box. That is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you now are experts in the CGM. If you have any questions about my work or the CGM in general, or just any kind of like astronomy related questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. And for those of you who are interested in my secondary project, my observing project, stay tuned. It is coming to you soon. As usual, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Bye.